today I'm doing something you won't see me do very often at all. So I received a call a couple of days ago that Zappy wasn't working, so I came and had a look, I checked all the wiring. Okay, plug this in and see what we've got. So this is fucked. And that was all fine. So it turns out this is just a faulty zappy. And I thought it'd be a good idea to share with you what happens if your zappy breaks and the process that you need to go through in order to get it replaced, assuming you're still within your warranty period. So I thought while I'm replacing this, I will give you some consumer advice. The installer for this job came from Brighton and what my client done was he went through the MyEnergy portal looking for recommended installers. Which is fair enough, no problem. But what a lot of people don't realise is that when you go on these websites, and it's the same as lead generation websites where you get multiple quotes, what you're going to find is that the contractors on there who are quoting and bidding for your job, it is a race to the bottom price. So when they turn up, and this isn't a dig to other electricians trying to win work, I get it, but in order to win the job, you have to provide the cheapest quote, basically. And what comes with that is the cheapest materials going. It's the only way that these jobs can be done at a lower price. It's absolutely throwing it down. So if I start at the beginning of this job, I'll show you what this installer has done. First of all, they've installed this little consumer unit inside the meter box, not technically allowed. I know there's people that disagree with that, but it's not supposed to be there. And the consequence of this is that my client wanted to get a smart meter installed, which you need to get on the cheaper EV tariffs, and they refused because there's nowhere to put it. So I need to now come back another day and remove this consumer unit, put an IP rated one on the outside, adjust some of the cabling. So it turns out that cheap quote is not now the cheapest quote. And there's obvious signs that this job's been rushed, such as the data cables just put in these little blocks and taped up. Could really be put in a junction box inside here. They've used a separate Cat5 and a high tough cable, which you know I'm not a fan of. So that's just clipped all the way around. Again, no EV Ultra cable clips. These are traditional cable cleats, which look ugly, which then goes around and into the charging unit. So the guys that have installed it, you know, they've, they've just taken a couple of shortcuts, but I imagine they're in a big rush to get this job done because obviously cheap price, not a lot of time to do it. For the CT wiring as well, they've used two, two of the pairs and you should really only use one core of each. Stuff, stuffing glands, not tight at all. If you can see the lock ring at the back, that's moving. <laughs> and they're barely tight. And the other thing is these stuffing glands here, they're not really designed for a data cable and a high tough to go through the same gland. It's just not designed for it. It just impairs the seal. Fortunately, this one is under shelter. They have used mastic on the other side, so there's no water integration at all. And I'm limited to what I can do at this stage, unfortunately, without replacing the whole cable. So the other thing that hasn't been done here, which I always do, is I put some sealant on this side just to make sure there's absolutely no chance of water integration here. So anyway, continuing on with my story. So if you find yourself in the position where your zappy is no longer working, the first thing you should do is contact My Energy. And what My Energy will do is they will get an approved zappy installer out to come and take a look and see what's wrong. Once the electrician has carried out his fault finding procedure, he'll advise you on whether it's the installation or the charger. Look at this weather, I've been so lucky today. I've done a zappy earlier and that was in a garage. And now I'm under this lovely sheltered area. It's almost quite nice working when you're in the dry and it's raining out there, isn't it? So anyway, 
Once the diagnosis has been carried out and it's determined that it's the charger's fault, notify my energy and they'll get sent out a charger straight away. Again, as long as it's within that three year warranty period. And I'll be honest with you, they're really good. This got phoned in yesterday and here is the charger today. And my clients have got loads of driving to do over the weekend. So they asked me if I wouldn't mind just working Friday evening and getting it done, which I'm happy to do. And here's a little tip for the other installers. See this little nut here? If you do it up, then the gland doesn't move. Once your charger's arrived, get in touch with your installer if you haven't already, and let them know that it's gonna turn up, and then they will carry out the work under warranty for my energy. And that's where we're up to today. I'm the installer, reinstalling a new Zappi. Okay. Now, because this was a faulty charger, I don't really know what's caused it. It could have been a surge. There's no surge protection here, which is what I'm gonna install later on. I'm gonna test the installation just to make sure there's nothing wrong with that before I connect this up and then do, go through my commissioning process. Right, so the cable tested fine. So now we're gonna put it back together and turn her on. One thing I will say though is, it's like 10 past four on a Friday and no sign of a cup of tea. This customer has been blacklisted. And if you're watching this, I'm only joking, but can I have a cup of tea when I do the consumer unit? Thank you. Go. That's better. So my advice to you is, when you're getting these quotes from the My Energy website, now don't get me wrong, I love My Energy. It's a great company, and I love the Zappi. It's my absolute go-to charger. And all the guys that are on the approved installer website have gone through the Zappi trainings, I'm not knocking that. But the materials that the installers use are not regulated. And the cheap quotes, the only way they're getting down there on that price is by using cheap products. So when you get your quotes, or if you're getting quotes from local contractors, specify on certain materials. Specify that you want EV Ultra cable installed, that you want D-line clips installed. The consumer unit wants to be a half decent brand, like a fuse box, they're pretty good. Uh, the BG external ones, they're good, which would have been suitable in this case. Not this, whatever the f this is. Don't get one of these. And what you end up with is a good quality installation that's gonna last ages. Now I am coming back to this job to replace that consumer unit, move it on the outside. If you wanna see how I do that and what materials I use, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one.